talk about your team, how sharp they were tonight, especially passing. Yeah, there was a lot of sharpness. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, like we talked about yesterday, that we talked, you know, our teams just kept going. We got a day off, we play a game, and you know, it really looked good for us tonight. And obviously, they were a little bit rusty tonight. They weren't the same, being you know nine days off. So it makes a difference. Go ahead, Dan. Um, we talked a little bit about the kid line. We'll call it that for now. Mm -hmm. um, before the game, they've had a lot of good nights in these playoffs. Do you think that this was their best one? And if so, what would they do? It was real. It was close to their best. If it wasn't the best for sure, and they they got inside. They scored some nice goals. They made some good plays, and you know they're attacking. So they're they're a confident bunch of kids right now, and uh, we need that to continue. I I had asked True at the at the start of the, the game that uh, if if it was in the back of your guys' mind that Tampa hadn't been playing in a while, and he basically said no, not at all. You guys have preached worrying about yourself. Yeah. How important is that kind of mentality at this point? Yeah, if you start thinking about the other team you're playing, it's, for me, it's not going to work for us. I mean, we play our game. We can show them systems on Tampa Bay and what they're going to do, but we got to be more important. To, you know, our game's good. We're playing well. We're doing the right things now, and we just got to continue to do that. On the left side, first row. You had mentioned to us that you had a conversation with Philip Heedle toward the end of the season. I was curious if you could share anything that you said in that conversation, and then what have you seen you think that's helped them the most? No, I mean, we talked to our players all year long. I mean, I I don't know. I met with him probably after when we, when he sat out that one game and he just said, you know, he asked what I needed. And I think I mentioned the Zibanejad type of hockey player. And he's not a Zibanejad type of hockey player, but he, he got the message. And uh, you know what? Phil's a good kid. He worked hard. He competes hard. And he deserves what he's getting right now because he, he stepped his game up. And uh, he knows it and everybody knows it. And that's exactly what we need from him. All the way on the left side. Jorick, uh, can you speak to uh, Mika uh, and just that spot that he's in with those one-timers and how dangerous that is and what, and, and what your feeling is when you see him open? Well, that's your power plays run a lot from there, and obviously Panarin on the other side coming downhill looking for the for the tippins, and uh, he can make those seam passes. So it's a dangerous power play when we get those opportunities, and no different. I mean, you look over at the other side when they got Stamkos and Kucherov over there. I mean, they've done that for a lot of years, and they scored a lot of goals from over there. So fortunately, ours went in tonight, and theirs didn't. As a quick follow on Nick, can you talk about the kind of postseason he's had with all these goals he's producing? Uh, the pro season he's had, Mika. The, Mika? Yeah. Oh, he's been outstanding. He's been our leader all year long, and he plays a great two-way game for us, and all, all special teams, obviously, so he's just been outstanding for us. On the right side, second row. Outwardly to us in media conferences, it seems like Bill Beadle has been sort of gaining a lot of confidence as this postseason mm -hmm. has gone on. What have you seen from his demeanor? It looks like he's just he's exceptionally poised right now. Yeah, he's... He's grown up to be a man. He's 22 years old, and he's confident in his game, and he feels good about his game, and he always has. But now he's really stepping it up, and every time you watch him go out there and play, he's he's more confident. He's stronger in every puck. He's more confident in the face-off circle. So he's just growing up. Over here on the right turn, uh, sir. Just the possession time that you guys had for a lot of that second period is not really something that you've been able to do consistently. Was there anything that you guys were able to do tonight that you maybe weren't able to do at times in some of the other? No, uh, I I thought the second period was outstanding. I don't know how much possession time we had and all that. I know you guys take track of that, but it felt real comfortable in the second period. I thought we played a, as good a period as we played all playoffs long, to be honest with you. We got inside on a couple of goals, but uh, we def definitely did some real good things down low. Jordan, what's, what's Vitrano brought to your lineup since he was quiet? How big was that moment in the first period? You know, you, he has the back check on Vlad mm -hmm. to save the goal. Then he scores the next shift. Yeah, he competes hard. He works hard. He back checks real hard. And uh, that's what we asked him to do. We asked our guys to get in shot lanes and back check hard through the middle of the ice. And he made a huge play there. And like you said, next, when you make those good plays defensively, usually good things happen at the other end. And that's what Frankie did. We'll take one more question, front left. So, first five games against Carolina, you guys scored nine goals. Last three games, you have 17. What are you seeing? Anything? I told him to open it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there anything to that? No, I don't think so. I mean, it's we're playing hard. Like I said, I think when you when you compete hard defensively and you, and you get opportunities like we did tonight, some two on ones and some power play goals, that's the medicine, the recipe for us to you know to get, to win hockey games. And again, we had great goal again and solid chances, and we buried our chances tonight.